Hello and welcome back, prepressors. This is your teacher, Ben Kewitt. I'm going to be setting you up a demo here on how to work on our first project that I've assigned you. We're going to be working on doing some page layout and some rather obnoxious and tedious uh, file placement to help practice for imposition and layout using Adobe InDesign and some pre built elements and some elements you'll build yourself. So I'll start with a quick intro to InDesign and how to set up your basic preferences if you just got the program. By the way, I've been informed by Steve Klippenstein of the Art Department that right now is a great time if you're looking to get a copy of this for yourself if you don't already have it, because there's a special student deal that gets you six months for only $40 and a whole year for only $80. Normally the student pricing is $20 a month and non-student pricing is closer to 50. So now is the time to jump on that. In fact, it costs less than a textbook to get a year's subscription. So if you don't have it, now's a great time to grab it. Otherwise, we'll work on other ways of getting you guys access to this through the campus. Anyways, when you first open your InDesign, before you've opened or created any sort of document, you can set one or two preferences that I like to have set up. So I'm gonna go up here to InDesign, Preferences, Units and Increments. Mine is already set up. I'm gonna show you the setup so you guys can follow this. I keep the ruler set to the spread and then the ruler units, I like to use inches. You have a lot of possibilities here. Points and picas are traditional printer use. I've drifted away from using them in general just because most of the clients I've worked with through my whole career have been non-printers who don't understand picas and it's easy for me easier for me just to think in inches so I can communicate it more easily to the uninitiated. Uh, both directions do work. So I set it for uh, inches for horizontal and vertical, and that'll help me make things that make sense to lay people. Down below the other units, stroke should be set to points. And point pica size, we're doing the postscript size, 72 points, making it even. There are a few other older versions of points and picas that are slightly different than the uh, more precise ones of the digital age. We'll leave the uh, other measurements alone. This is the basic thing I wanted to set up. Mainly we're just setting up inches. Okay. The first thing you want to do here is create new here on the left for our project. For these playing cards, uh, most people know offhand that a standard bridge deck is 52 cards, I mean slash poker deck. Um, but if you want to include jokers, that would then two or three of those would make it 55 cards, the number of pages. In this little new document window here that shows up, I should introduce better. This little pop-up window gives you a ton of control. If you're new to InDesign, welcome. I'm glad you're here, you're gonna like this. Um, when I first finally got to InDesign after years of dealing with um, either completely inadequate word processors like Microsoft Word and other free versions thereof, and also trying to use the near criminally imp uh, difficult uh, Quark Express, which was the first of the desktop publishing programs that came out that really launched us into doing digital prepress. InDesign is a relief because it's so easy. It gives you such good control over so many things, and it does it in, in a much more intuitive way. If you're not used to this, it may not feel as intuitive, but trust me, it used to be a lot harder. Anyway, so the new document setup. You choose a number of pages. The page numbers doesn't, uh, starting the page number doesn't really matter here unless you are doing a document with numbered pages, which we're not. Uh, the question of facing pages we'll get into more later this semester, but for now, uncheck it. Facing pages won't actually help you much in creating this set of cards. Page size, you can choose from predetermined page sizes or you can type in your own. What I just said there is shockingly good if you've just come from using only word processors. Because I've had to do this even in professional life sometimes for clients who don't have real programs, one of the hardest things you can do in Microsoft Word is try to change the page size to something you want rather than something it wants. InDesign on the other hand is here to help you. On the first uh, way of this is there's a bunch of predetermined sizes, letter, legal, tabloid, halvesies of those different sizes. Also the A series and B series if you're using paper from anywhere else in the world because it makes more sense. 
There's a business card preset and a CD uh, preset. That's all pretty good. Custom. You can see on the top of here, one of my favorite sizes, the 5x7 card, is a preset that I set up for myself. But you can type in any size you want. For this today, we're going to do 3.5 as the width, and the height is going to be 2.5. And I actually got those mistaken. Oh man, can you believe it? In no way is this a teachable moment. So if I quick click over here and hit the orientation of portrait, it swaps the two measurements there because it knows that it can't be portrait or orientation if it's wider than it is tall. Hooray. Columns and gutter, we're gonna leave alone for today. Margins, again, if you are recently joining us from the dystopian hellscape that is Microsoft Word and trying to do graphics there, welcome to freedom. The margins are no longer your prison. The margins here are really just guidelines to help you line things up. I ignore them more often than not. <clears throat> now down here, bleed and slug, you're gonna open that up and we're definitely going to use bleed. Bleed is going to be 0.125, except for my ham-handed typing. 0.125 or 1 8 of an inch is the industry standard bleed amount here in the United States. Everywhere else it's three millimeters, which is the metric equivalent of, equivalent of an eighth of an inch. Anyways, if you're not familiar with bleed, you will be. Bleed is one of the soapboxes I like to stand on top of and harangue the crowds from. Bleed is one of those things you need to understand if you're getting into graphics, layout, printing of any sort. Bleed is the open industry secret of how we do what we do. Let me put it to you this way, and I'll show you what it looks like once we create the document. You cannot bake bread without baking a crust. So if you want a sandwich that has no crust, you have to cut off the crust to make a crustless sandwich, right? Because bread always has a crust. In the same way, if you want to print to the edge of the paper, you can't. The edge of the paper belongs to the machinery. No matter what, the machines that you're printing on are gonna to have to hold the paper somewhere physically. They cannot print the edge of the sheet. So if you wanna make it look like you printed to the edge of the sheet, you print on a bigger sheet and then you cut the edges off. Just like taking that crust off that bread. Let's say okay and see what we built. So here we are. We have ourselves a single sheet. I'm gonna zoom in and out. I like to use the option mouse wheel to scroll in and out. Hopefully I'm not making you too dizzy. And we can look at a few things here. Let me make my mouse big. And woo. As you look at this thing, here's a few things to note about what you're going to see on your pages. First off, we have our, the white space is the paper. That dark gray space around it is theoretically speaking, imagine this is on a, a table or a desk and I'm doing my work on it. So that's my art desk that I'm working on in my room. And then digitally speaking, that white space in the middle of it is my paper, the size of the finished cutout sheet of whatever it is I'm making. That magenta rectangle inside my white square rectangle is my margins. Again, the margins don't force you inside like they do in Word and some other uh, processor uh, programs uh, where the margins are in fact the bounding box of where you can type. Here the margins are just there to remind you, hey, leave this much space if you want to, or as I like to, ignore them entirely because I don't care. I, I know how far I need to go. There's a red line outside the uh, white uh, paper spot. Outside your she uh, print sheet, that red line is the bleed line. That shows you if you have any graphics, artwork, photos, colors that want to go to the edge of the page, they need to go past that and all the way to that red line. <clears throat> now there's a quick shortcut I'm going to show you. I'm going to jump to a second video to go to the next bit of this. If you hit the letter W, it toggles between a print output preview and showing you all your hidden lines and things. The hidden lines are there to help you, but W shows you it's actually in the print. Right now I have one whoppingly good blank page and that's a pretty good start. 